Hi, welcome back to Pre-Cal 40S. This is the second part of 3.1, R12. We're going to look at characteristics of polynomials. In this um, video right here, actually what you're seeing in front of you is page 109 of your textbook. I'm also going to recommend page 113 of your textbook as well. It's got a very nice summary of what we're looking at. We're going to look at the characteristics of polynomial functions. And first here, what you see is, uh, right here, if you notice, this is a degree of zero. So when you have a constant function, your line goes straight across. And if you notice, uh, just right here, it's got the domain and the range listed, number of x-intercepts. Well, in this case, there are zero. It doesn't cross the x-axis at all. And the end behavior is extending horizontally. This one here is a degree of 1. It's a linear function. So if you notice, your end behavior, it goes diagonally across like this. It slopes up. Uh, it's a positive, uh, positive linear function. And your end behavior, the line extends down into quadrant 3 and up into quadrant 1. This is your degree of Two, so it's the same, exactly the same as a quadratic or a parabola. And in this one here, the end behavior, the curve extends up into quadrant two and up into quadrant one. And there are two x-intercepts for this. If we continue on and look at a degree three polynomial right here, this one, it crosses the x-axis one, two, three times, and the end behavior, the curve extends down into quadrant three and up into quadrant one. And looking at this one here, this is a function that has a fourth degree polynomial. We've got one, two, three, four x-intercepts, and the end behavior, the curve extends up into quadrant 2 and also into quadrant 1, so right here and here. And for the fifth degree polynomial right over here, you've got five intercepts, five x-intercepts, and the end behavior, the curve extends down into quadrant 3 and up into quadrant 1. Now, what I want you to notice, first thing, is I want you to notice what all the similarities are between the uh, squares and the, not sorry, not the squares, but among all of the polynomials that are of even degree and the ones that are of odd degree. Sorry, my page jumped on me. So if we look at the ones that are odd, notice how the end behaviors, the, the opposite ends of the arrows, they're going in opposite directions, and the even ones, they are going in the same direction, so right here. Uh, this is an odd degree, they're going in opposite directions, and the even is going in the same direction. And this odd is going in the opposite direction. Okay, now what would happen if these had a negative leading coefficient? Well, let me take you here to this uh, Desmos, it's an online calculator. Uh, if we were to look at x squared, and then we were to compare it with negative x squared, now what does the end behavior do? Well, basically it reflects over the x-axis, right? So your, um, the ends of the graph go into quadrant 3 and 4. So let's look at the x. This is just another example of a parabola. So the positive version and the negative version. And if we look at a quartic power to the power of 4, we have up in quadrants 1 and 2, and the negative version is in quadrants 3 and 4. So we can just look at a different version of a... here, I'll just show you that. Okay, so here this is a negative uh, quartic, so a negative function that has a degree of 4. The leading coefficient is negative, that's what I mean, and the end behavior is going down in quadrant 3 and in 4. And then for the positive one, it's in the positive direction, so it goes up in quadrant 2 and quadrant 1. 
All right. Now, if we wanted to have a look at a power, the odd powers, so let's actually just look at this. I'll just... Uh, Okay, so now let's look at odd powered polynomials. So this is y equals x right here. This is a straight line, your end behavior, it's in the opposite ends, quadrant one and three. If we compare it to negative x, if you notice here, it's going in the opposite direction. Okay, so here this kind of looks like it has a negative slope, which it does. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, so straight line, linear, positive slope, opposite ends in uh, quadrants 1 and 3, and this one here, negative slope, opposite ends in quadrant 2 and 4. So if you just want to have a look at the cubic, this is what a standard cubic looks like, and this is what the negative cubic looks like. So just kind of take the positive one away, you can see the negative only. And so the end behavior is similar for all of the odd powered ones and there's a pattern with whether uh, the leading coefficient is positive or negative. So in the next page we're going to have a look at that and summarize all of this. Uh, so the next question Okay, so now using what we just looked at and summarized, um, I want you to try to match the following polynomials with the corresponding graph. And a couple of ideas is to keep in mind the leading coefficient, whether it's positive or negative. And also um, a good hint is to use the y-intercept to match it up with the graphs that are given. Okay, so take a second and see how you do. All right, so here's the reveal. Uh, the answers for one is B, and we match it up with B because of the y-intercept, and also you've got an odd degree polynomial, which is positive, and this is what the end behavior looks like. First parts for C, uh, the graph C, we chose number two. Number two works because you've got a fourth degree polynomial, it's negative, so the end behavior, both arms point down, and the y-intercept is at negative 6. For 3, that was graph D, and we have a leading coefficient of, it's a negative 2, and a power of 5. So it's a negative leading coefficient, so it's going to be the end behavior is in kind of a negative direction. And uh, it's it's of this type, or we could we could say we could say it's x to the power of five type. So you've got kind of like one, two, three, four bumps going on in there. And number four matched up with a. You've got your y-intercept of sixteen and it's a positive leading coefficient, and it's the x to the fourth type. So both end behavior points in the positive direction. Okay, now this next question here it looks at applications of a polynomial function. Uh, this first question, it says a toaster oven is, oh, sorry, a toaster oven is built in the shape of a rectangular prism its volume V in cubic inches is related to the height H in inches of the oven door by the function V of H equals H cubed plus 10 H squared plus 31 H plus 30. Now what is the volume in cubic inches if of the toaster oven if the door height is 8 inches? So we're going to take H as our height and substitute into this equation here and solve. All right. So this is what the work looks like. And our answer is 1430 inches cubed. So the volume is 1430 inches cubed if the door height is 8 inches. Okay. Simple substitution here. 
Okay, this next question says a bank vault is in the shape of a rectangular prism. Its volume V is related to the width W in meters of the vault doorway by the function. So this is our function here that's given. And then it says, what is the volume in cubic meters of the vault if the door is one meter wide? So we're going to take one, so W equals one, and we're going to substitute it into here. So why don't you substitute it into there? and you end up getting 140. So there's the work for the substitution. Sorry, having paper issues. All right, now if we plug in our one here in place of our W, we get the volume of the vault is 140 meters cubed. Okay, now this next question is a little silly. It says, uh, what is the least of the volume of the vault? What is the least volume of the vault? Can't even read it properly. When the door is zero meters. Okay, so that's kind of silly, right? But I guess it's just looking at all the material that's making up this vault if it didn't have a door. Uh, so plug in zero and we end up getting 72. So this is the y-intercept and it's also the constant term of the polynomial. So here, here's your answer. If the door was zero meters wide, the volume of the vault would be 72 meters cubed. Okay, well, thanks for coming out. Hope that was helpful and we'll uh, see you again soon.